welcome to the Pink Hair Girl podcast. My name is Sally Jane and this is Rachel. Hello. Welcome and thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate the time that you spend um, with us and uh, we hope that you'll enjoy it. It is Monday, the 16th of May. Um, 2016. 2000. Well, I think most people know what year they're in. We don't always know what day we're in because the days seem to be going fast, but most people know what year they in. I guess but unless you come across this podcast years later or something, hey. 2016. It's actually a very nice day in Cape Town today. It's um, coolish inside, but quite warm outside. outside in the sun. I'm not sure what the temperature is today. It's uh, around 21. 24, actually. 24 degrees, which for <laughs> some people is summer. <laughs> so... Welcome. What have we been up to? Lots of stuff. Have we? I don't know what we've been up to. We've done lots of knitting. It's been quiet otherwise. We went to a, um, a expo at the waterfront that's put on by the American Natural History Museum called the Art, what the Power of Poison. With the um, so that was quite nice. We went with that um, to that item with my mom. Um, but you are mostly school and just sort of normal stuff. Yeah. Eh? So should we just get on with the knitting? Because that's why everybody's here after all. Do you want to do FOs or whips first? You decide. I must decide. Okay, let's do some FOs because I have two. Um, and then we'll move on to everything else. Let me finish this real quickly. Right, so my first FO is... The second one of the shawls that I was doing, the grey one, which is this, which somebody has claimed. Somebody claimed it that it should it be made. that it should be this. Somebody thinks that they should have this. <laughs> so that's the second one, in a semi-solid and a um, variegated yarn. And I've got some testers. Thank you very much to those that have kindly agreed to test knit for me. Um, some, um, my friend Sally Wool Diaries is doing hers in two semi-solids. And then there are some that are doing it in a kind of speckled, not quite variegated, but kind of a speckled yarn for the main color, for this color. And then a, um, a semi-solid for this color. So yeah, there are some very nice ones. Um, being tested at the moment yes and we took some photographs on friday and so it's all coming along yes yeah we last recorded a, and uploaded about almost two weeks ago um i don't know so yes there we have our different right shawls and we were having a name dilemma but i have come up with the name now i'm not sure if i'm supposed to share it before we oh, where's the other tail there we go um but I think I probably will. What I've decided is, remember we're talking about the, um, uh, like, new beginnings or sunrise, because you know, it kind of like looks like a sunrise or whatever. I was actually thinking, um, I had that song stuck in my head, it's a brand new day, and I'm not, I'm not going to sing it for you. <laughs> um, and I can't even include the music, because YouTube has a lot of licensing Thing. So maybe I'll link. I'll link to the song that I'm thinking of. Um, and so I've decided to call it a new day. Um, there weren't as there were lots of patterns called sunrise and daybreak. Of course, is a, a, a Stephen West pattern and things like that. So I thought a new day um, was nice because it was sort of new beginnings, but a new day, a new start, a brand new day. But now people are gonna think that's a cool name to name their pattern. Well, there are, there are patterns on Ravelry called the same thing. There are quite a few that have the same name. So there were a couple, but there weren't any shawls called New Day. So that's what I'm going to call it, the New Day shawl. So, yeah. Um, the testers are coming along. I've done my two samples and... No problems. Yeah. I mean, the rows get, Sally was moaning on her podcast that the rows were getting really long. I'm sorry, it does get kind of long towards the end. But it gives you a good shape, I think, and a good, um, it's got a good wingspan and a good depth in the end. So 
I know she was moaning terribly about having to do these really long rows. It does take, at the end, the rows do take quite long, but I think it's worth it in the end. Yeah. And I'm really impressed. I mean, these are so different. I mean, the colors, ways are so different, but yet I think they're both very striking in their own way. Um, so watch out for that coming soon. So that was my one finished object. The other one was it was Mother's Day, last week Sunday. And there was Sally said to me, are we doing the Mother's Day cast on? Apparently, I think it's the Prairie Girls do a cast on every Mother's Day. And the only rule is that it has to be something for you. Um, that's the only rule. When you finish it and, and what it is and what share, anything, that, none of that matters. What yarn you use, how, any, how long you take. The only rule for the Mother's Day cast on is that it's for yourself, right? So what do you do? <laughs> So Sally chose, I said, oh, let's do like something together, you know. So Sally chose a pattern. We both had patterns in our, our libraries by the Yarniad. And um, I, they're a similar construction. I've got the Star Shower, which Amelia gifted to me. And she has a similar one. I'm, I'm, the name has slipped my mind. Anyway, it's this kind of uh, shawl that becomes a cowl sort of thing. So you knit it. You knit the first piece um, like a shawl, this bit here, <laughs> it's a bit hard to show you, this bit here really, so if you imagine that's in half, so you've got that open like that, and then you put those two ends together and you start joining it in the round for this bit, so that's the, the pattern, but the pattern on this one is worked on the wrong side, this little star pattern, so you join it in the round, and then the pattern calls for um, doing a wrap and turn to work the wrong side rows and then wrapping and turning back to do the garter rows, um, the, the sort of stocking and net stick section. And I thought, I can't be doing that. I can't be doing this like wrapping and turning and, and cutting on. So you join it in the round and then you need to knit on the right side and then you turn it to the wrong side and then to the right side and it's the wrong side and no, I'm like no I'm not doing that I just did the whole thing inside out because the bit that you turn around to do on the right side is only knit and purl it's a stockinette section so all I did was I switched up the knit rows for purl rows and purl rows for knit rows so that on the right side would be what it was supposed to be if I knitted the whole thing on the wrong side um yeah and that's what I did so I, if you are going to knit it and you don't mind knitting on the wrong side, just knowing that the, the, the pattern is the same, just on the rows of where you were supposed to turn it back to the right side, you're going to need to knit the purl rows and purl the knit rows. As long as you don't mind doing that, then you don't need to be going backwards and forwards all the time. So I just knitted my inside out. Just a tip, if anyone wants to knit the star shower, which is a lovely pattern, um, and you don't want to be doing all the wraps and turns. Look, I mean, sometimes you're doing wraps and turns to do short rows. This is not a short row wrap and turn. This is just a wrap and turn so that you do the, the, the star um, seed pattern thingy on the wrong side. So I just did everything on the wrong side. So anyway, so it goes like, it's got a number of different ways you can wear it, but basically it's supposed to be going like, And then you can pull it down over the shoulders. And mine did, <laughs> mine did block out to the right measurement. So I take it off the needle. And there's this little schematic over here with the measurements, you see. And so I measure this 56 centimeters along the top. And mine's only about 30. And I'm like, Sally, my thing is way too small. I don't know what I've done. How have I got half the size? And she said, well, maybe your gauge is off. And I mean, I'm, I'm sometimes a tiny, tiny bit tighter, but really, like half a stitch usually. It's never normally. I think, like, what have I done? Like, how have I messed it up this much? Um, and then when I laid it all round, I read carefully. Measurement in the round. So my 30 was fine. You know, it was 16. So my measurements were all right when I laid them out and blocked it. But my shoulders must be wider because I can't pull it down. It like pulls that. down on me. Yeah, Rachel can. But I can't really pull it down like that over my shoulders. Be a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a bigger size for you. Maybe. But then it says her one comes in two sizes. You could kind of do it sideways, I think, over one 
So I don't know. She had a couple of different ways of wearing it. Um, round the neck. Oh, and then you're all sort of to the one side. Yeah, it doesn't go over my both shoulders, but I know I've got sort of broad shoulders. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, there we go. So it's this kind of cowl. It's sort of like having a shawl, but you don't have the ends dangling down. It's as though you've tucked your ends in by making it into a cowl. So now the part about the only rule was that you had to knit it for yourself. So much for that one. So much for that. I kind of broke the rule. I, I really wanted it to give for a friend at the moment. Um, there's a friend of mine that um, I just really wanted to knit for. And the more I was knitting on this, the more I was thinking it would just really suit her and the colours were something that she would like. And the whole time I was knitting it, I was just thinking about her. And, um, and then I thought, oh, I could knit something. Oh, I just really liked the way the yarn worked with the pattern. I just think it actually came out really well. Now, this yarn is... Yeah, <laughs> no, I can't remember. It's um, I went to go and get. Oh, sorry, I went to go and get my um, my book where I keep all the um, yarn tags and slips it and was notes and everything. To be a designing book. Yeah, I learned it up. So it was the um, this one over here. Oops, this way. The blue face less the British wool. And it is from Natural Dye Studio, and it was a yarn of the month in 2011. And it is 55% blue face less to 45% silk. Um, and I don't know, it just says dazzling 4 plus sock yarn. It doesn't say what the name of this specific, I suppose it was just the yarn of the month in that month. So, yeah, as I say, it's a BFL in silk. Um, from the natural dye studio and I actually got it from um, Claire so I, I actually think that the yarn and the pattern have come out really, really nicely, nicely really nicely together and it, it, I just think it's something that she will it's like. colors that she will like and she will look really nice in it and so I'm going to <laughs> I'm going to break the only rule of the mother's day along but in the spirit of being a mother because sometimes part of being a mother is being a caretaker and putting your other people's needs before your own and... No, so you can't have it in the knit along anymore. Well, no, I mean, it's, it's not a prize knit along. It's just that everybody sort of does a hashtag on, on Instagram and casts on together something for themselves. Like to spoil yourself as a mother because we always or, or often knit for other people. But yes, my friend is a mother and um, she's gone through a tough time and I just really wanted to give her something. She's a great mother. So it's a very, it's, it's going to an extremely worthy recipient, even though I'm breaking the rules. So I'm sorry about that. But, you're gonna but it's, break. yeah, it, it's got to, it's got to be done. How much have you got left? Not very much. Of the yarn. I didn't weigh it. There is actually quite a bit left. You can make another that? one. I probably could. How much does the pattern say it uses? Because I did not use... Because if it uses 50 grams, you can make it. It just says one grams. skein. I mean, it doesn't say exactly how much you're going to use. Um, weigh it and weigh that one and see how much you've got so As there. I say, it was the right size in the end um, when I did read the instructions correctly. And I mean, it couldn't be really much bigger than that. I mean, it's got to sort of sit around your neck. So, yeah. The Star Shower Course um, Shawl by the Yarniak Hilary Smith Callis. Um, so I finished that, cast that on, on on Mother's Day, finished it last night, and um, that's my other my other finished object. So uh, Cecilia is knitting the other one, and, and I can't remember the name. It had a, 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 a name I can't remember. So that is my other finished object mm -hmm. um the only other thing i fit well sort of finished was that i finished a row on my sock yarn blanket now somebody asked me what pattern i was doing on the sock yarn blanket now i started off following the pattern for um the kind of the recipe for the sock yarn blanket but it makes it with the sort of 
zigzag edge so your your sort of squares are like that and they're going to lie like that on the blanket and then you have the next one there and so on and then I actually decided that I wanted to make mine uh, square, because, square. You, because you were not going to see yeah I didn't think I was going to crochet right. around the edge and I, so I wanted it square so I actually changed I, I went around mine and then I made it I made square. it square so I don't actually know yeah it will be a rectangle so I don't actually know what the pattern is that t tells you how to do it square I did go to look on Ravelry and I couldn't find instructions for a mitered square blanket that made it straight so if anybody knows how or what the pattern is I use um, 20 stitches you know down the one bit and then one for the middle and then 20 stitches so along 41 stitches. 41 stitches mine's 41 stitches wide I use a two and a half mil needle and then I do a central double decrease so you decrease by I slip two onto the needle together knit wise knit the one and put those two over um, that knit one so that's the decrease I do in the middle and when I'm picking up on the edge so when there's a gap and I'm going to pick up along there and there I pick up my 20 and then my one I pick up from this middle one so from the one below so that it kind of lines up nicely between these two here so I, I would pick up your 20 there one there and then 20 there to make your 41 if that makes sense and so last time I think I had gone to about the green one so I just finished off these couple. I really like this one. This is a watermelon yarn that my friend um, Elaine Krimfarki sent for me in a mini skein set that she said. So I like that. So yeah, I finished that that row. So this was I, I picked it up again when we did um, a blanket madness that Sally was doing in May. Yeah. Was it May or April? April. Yeah. And so I just wanted to finish that row. So, and I probably start. I've been. I really enjoyed working on it. Actually, it's quite chilly in the evening, and it's long enough that if I knit with it this way on me <laughs> as I'm going along the top, then I can kind of um, use yeah. it a bit. But yeah, that's really not quite big enough as a blanket, is it? And no, I haven't woven in. I've, I've woven in you. some. You can see that bit's all woven in, but this um. this bit here really isn't. <laughs> So, um, I have a better idea. What? Make it a scarf and call it finished. <laughs> so that is my sock yarn blanket. So I finished that row. And that's all for FOs. So just a... Um, Nothing for me. A cowl, finished a very long row shawl, and did a couple of squares on these. Yeah, right. Um, I did nothing. You didn't craft that much this week, did you? I don't know what you were doing. No time. You weren't crafting very much. So you've got a um, sock. You've been working on your sock. Well, teeny wee. Bit. You're almost at the almost at the heel. But about this much away from uh, the heel. Just about an inch for the heel. Yeah. She is offering to knit her mother, who has size eight feet. Now. I don't know what that is in American. It's something like a ten and a half, eleven. It's a big foot, you know. Like her what mother has South African, foot? yeah. Her mother has South African and UK is the same size, eight foot. So this is my little daughter trying to knit her mother a sock. So I mean, like hats off to her for getting that far in the first place. Um, but I, I could kind of start it in June last year. Something like that. I think it is a. Um, 11, 10 and a half, 11 in the US size. They were big anyway. Yeah. But you've definitely made progress. I think you've definitely so. made progress. Your yarn came out very nice. Mm. She dyed that herself. And I think it came out they very nice. supposed to fit on mom's feet. <laughs> I will. can't try them on because of the cable. Oh, That's the nine the inch circulars. Yeah. The cable. Mm. But they work better for them to match a crew. Yeah. Um, what else are you knitting on? You need to say your socks. Oh, I'm knitting on the Kingfisher socks. This is the Opal Rainforest Kingfisher yarn. And um, my sister 
sent me a message to say sorry in the madness of her son's birthday she forgot to let me know that the place that we'd ordered the sally remember i told her that there was a sally rainforest yarn was actually out of stock it was wrong on the website so my heart sank and i set about trying to find another place to get it and every website i went on to out of stock out of stock out of stock and then i only mean, want two i mean you know it's called sally both wool diaries and i need to have one eventually i managed to find somewhere that had two sally yarns in Is stock in the UK? and my sister has sent me a photo that it has arrived to her house so it is within my grasp as it is purchased and it is at my sister's house and it will probably wait there until christmas yeah until my mom goes at christmas time now where was that message from my sister i was very excited see there there's my sally on at my sister's house <laughs> so yes that's where that's going to stay. So the Kingfisher one, I haven't even finished stock one yet. But this is the King. I got it in my Christmas um, my, 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 my Christmas yarn, uh, my Christmas parcel. And I'm really, really loving these. So again, it was a very standard. Oh, I know what I did differently this time. I did the heel differently. I did the, um, the extra, it's called a deep pocket heel. And I don't know if she has a pattern of it without being in the sock. The, where I got it from was the White Sandy Beach Socks by Pearl of the Pacific. And it definitely gives a little bit more room. So you do this extra gusset, then you do the short rows, and then you decrease down the side. Because otherwise it struggles to get over our heels. Yeah. So it makes it a little bit of a, a deeper pockety bit for your heel leg, which is quite nice. So I did that this time on the the heel so that's what i've done differently so it's not my normal um fishes fish kiss, kiss heel yeah and i mean it does fit better the pain is that i need pattern and i need to sit and i need to concentrate and i need to count and all the rest and i know the fish lips kiss out of my head and so often i get to the heel point and i go uh, I'll just put in the fish lips kiss heel because I can do it. It's, it doesn't doesn't fit. It's just a little so much tight across the top of my my foot. Well, so. you did them almost all of last year. I did, but this is this one does actually really fit quite well. So um, yeah, so I normally make mine in half as long as the other one. So I've got a little way to go to go to finish that. And this one is living in my bag that I got in the flower swap earlier this year. From um, it's really cute, hey. And then the way these flap up, and you can see the little. I still think you must put like little needles. In yeah, them. I should put my Johnny needles there. It's okay. cute, hey. Um, and so that's living in this bag. Oopsie, stuff that in there. It's really cute. I love this fabric. So yeah, that's my um sock project. It can talk at to you. Mom, it can talk to you. I don't normally have inanimate objects talking to me. <laughs> so yes, that's my sock and that's the bag it's in. It and can everything give you else. Knitting advice. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um that was that right. What uh, else are you knitting on park from a pair of socks? Well, I cast on today because I cast off the star shower last night so i cast on today i'm doing a magic swap in the south african group and the um theme is magic yes the theme is magic but you have to it's not sending yarn this time you actually have to send a knitted piece a knitted object object item a knitted something it can be an object i guess so an object is anything yeah solid yeah um so i am doing the cape point shawl pattern of mine which is this one is which is a, a crescent oh, types was really nice. a crescent shape garter shawl awesome with a mess. chevron edge so this is what i'm going to be doing that oops pair everywhere um yeah but I'm not doing it in these colours 
at all. I'm doing something very different. I am. Oh, I haven't even put it back in the bag. I was keeping this in a toadstool bag because it's a magic knit along. And it looks. Well, not knit along. Um. Uh. uh project you know the for a magic swap so i am um, we don't have to send a project bag but there's a project bag sally made for me and it's got two stools and so that was quite magical and fairyish and stuff so i uh, where is my shawl okay, so do you have to, are you allowed to show it if your partner might see oh well, they won't know who they are to be my partner if i'm not going to do the full explanation so i'm just going to yeah. I, i'll explain why i did what i did after the parcels have gone but so far that's what we have. That's my first colour stripe there. So you see that's the first yeah. stripe up there. So I've got some other colours. <laughs> and you shall have to wait and see what they are. But this is... If you were lucky enough to get this. If yes. you're in the swap. <laughs> then you'll see it. Hey? Why do you like it? You like the idea. But you can send to me. No. And I'm not in the shop. No, I can't send to you. Let's pick up a drop stitch. So, that is what I'm knitting on. Is that it? Yeah. You are good. I am, aren't I? You're better than Sally. And she was the one who's usually better than you. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> Sally was decrease her projects down to one and then she'll beat you. No, everybody's got to do what they're happy with. If you want to have lots of projects, then that's fine. You must just not, you must uh, enjoy knitting on them. So if you want to have a variety and enjoy knitting on a variety, that's fine. If you're finding you're getting overwhelmed with lots of projects, then knit on one project. It doesn't matter. But at least watch as if you want to see pro progress on your things, knit on one thing at a time. Well, I think she clarified to say that if you knit on it one. for a time, then you see progress. Yes. I guess if you've got too much time you're splitting, but she said she didn't mean that you can only have one thing. So you can't... I guess you see the most progress if you only have one I wish thing. you could go like this and this in both hands. Oh, that would be cool. Hey. So what is your other project? I oh, have I was wondering if my star thing. shower counted for being opposite, because I was supposed to cast it on for me, and I ended up not making it for me. I wonder if that was my opposite so far. And then I haven't got around to doing the raindrops... Um, Short at all yet, which I was going to do for the opposites. You are doing the seeds of change. It's not a very clear picture because it's in black. No, and white. the seeds of change. Uh, it was in that episode. It was a couple 63. of sixty-three. Yeah, you'll see all um, the pictures. So this was sent to us by Clothesline Designs. Um, a momentary pause to go and quickly look it up on on Ravelry. Called to Caroline. It's her Ravelry name. And um, she sent me the um, pattern, very kindly gifted me the pattern. And it is, Rachel is intimidated by shawls that have exceptionally long rows, like this one. For, for example. example. Yeah, where you land up knitting 400 and something plus stitches. stitches. Yeah. And so for a beginner knitter, that is a little bit scary. Intimidating. And Rachel also doesn't like purling. So when no. I saw this pattern, it's all knit in garter stitch, and I don't think there's a single pearl stitch in no. the whole thing. And it is more like a scarf. So it's it's one of those that sort of starts out and then gets slightly bigger, and then it goes slightly. So it's like a long thing um, with the lace edging on the side. So that's what you have started today. And you're also doing yours in yellow. I'm not very far. That's so far. Hmm. It is in but she's learning to read a pattern and she's learning to read a chart. And you're doing very well. It's in the Peace Rose colorway by Nurturing Fiber. It was a yarn club, hey? Let's see there. And this was a 50 gram. So I had 150 grams. And this is called Peace, Peace Rose. And it's this pink with it was a it was a, a um what's it? It's um, got like orangey pink flecks in yeah. the yellow. It was inspired by some roses. roses, but in different kind of not just one rose. Um, there were a couple of roses, and then Four there was roses. actually a grey as well that went with it. But you can see there, there's the yellow rose. 
Um, You've used them up slowly over time. Yeah, I've used some of the other pinks and reds and stuff in mini skeins and other things. But then I had the main color was this yellow, and I had 150 grams, grams of that, and so I knew that would be enough for her. Because this only calls for 100 grams. Yeah, so it'll be. So like I could this. make it extra long. Well, you, you're not such a big person. I don't know that you need it extra, extra long. What, what can I do with this one to make it a match for my skin? Like a hat, you can make some arm warmers. For 50 make... grand. Yeah. Ankle socks? No, I'm not sure I'd make socks. It's in the nail on it. Oh, yeah. Um, we tend to be a bit hard on our socks for that. Uh, arm warmers. It's a bit hard for a shawl. <laughs> um, <laughs> arm warmers. Make some arm warmers with it. Yeah. So yes, um, that's Rachel's yeah. opposite. I'm on Because Rachel's never knitted a shawl, so it'll be her first time. I'm on so row nine. And it's opposite that Rachel normally does short projects and normally spins, so she's doing some yes. I'm on my ninth row. Good day. Yeah, good. yeah. No, you're doing well. And I've got And they've never they never get that long. I think the um how long do the rows eventually get? Oh, about 15 stitches. Uh, 100. Hmm, I think about 30. I don't know if that's with the edging. 5 minutes. But anyway, I mean, it, it doesn't ever get very, very wide in the widest part of it because it's more it like a... Because about that. Because more like a scar. Because yep. mine, at the moment, mine at the moment is about so big. I think it might get to so big. So... Right, what else did I want to say? What else have we got planned? I have some other to things to people. say. I have a couple of over to you um, questions and then um, an exciting share about why we should move to Germany, like post haste. We're not moving to Germany. <laughs> no. <Sorry. laughs> but yes, there was a very good reason why. Um, okay, let me start with that. So, Sarah, Yarn Poetry on. Um, Ravelry and Instagram contacted me. She said that we often talk very fast. So I'm sorry, Sarah, because I know if English isn't your first language, when somebody does speak very fast, it can be a bit hard to hear what they say. And she says, you're very quiet. It's sometimes hard to hear you because I'm a lot louder and you're very quiet. Anyway, so Sarah. <laughs> After I spoke about the thicker socks, the six-ply socks, she wrote to me and said that this is actually not an unusual phenomenon in Germany, but there are lots of brands that do four, six, and eight-ply. So the eight-ply is the double knitting socks. The six is like a sport weight, like we said, it probably was a sport weight. And then the four ply is the normal sock yarn. And they all come with nylon. And they're in the proper, you know, sock yarn for socks rather than just fingering weight yarn, not necessarily for socks. Yes, like loads of different brands of stuff. And there's lots of it. And you can knit lots of double knitting socks. Why don't you go to the German <laughs> so, and take a suitcase, and pack and a suitcase, <laughs> and then fill it up? Well, that's, What's in your suitcase, ma'am? Yeah, that's one thought. Because I thought to knit socks for Papa... If I can knit them on size 3 needles, that will go so because much faster. Because like a size 13 or 14 foot in American, so 11, yeah. No, it's, it's not that, but I mean it's a... It's 10 a, and a half. Nine, no, 9 and a half. Um, so it, yeah, it's just, you know, he kind of wants some more socks. He's a bit rough on his socks. So he some has nice, like 10. No, not that many. He has more than me. Well. I have two. Um... Because I'm too impatient to knit. You are impatient to knit your socks. I'll have to knit you some more. Sally knitted your socks. You haven't knitted me any. I'm sorry. And I'm I knitted you, you socks. I knitted you enormous shawls, 400 plus stitches on the end. Still, I'm knitting <laughs> your socks and you aren't. <laughs> I, I can take the shawl back. <laughs> <laughs> so Sarah said that the yarn, there's loads of places. And she is sending some hats for Rachel's charity. At the um, uh, Burns Unit Charity. So she said, would I like to buy some sock yarn? She will let me know what the websites are that she orders from, or you know what would be a good place to look in Germany. And I can order it to her house, and then she will pop it in the parcel coming to 
us. Now we hope this parcel won't get lost in the post. No, I've never lost anything coming to us. It takes a long, it takes a while. It takes much longer than people are used to. It takes but, about three months. Ugh, but it all gets here in the end. It doesn't, no, they've never, never taken three months. It just takes a bit longer than the, the, than the uh, a couple of weeks that people are used to with parcels. Maybe going. a month. Ten days. Yeah, a month, month and a half is not unusual. Um, so, yes, Sarah has offered to send some yarn with her parcel. So I was looking for something for the geek. I think we found... What about you? But I bought that Sally yarn for me in England. So I'm going to get something for Papa. And I think I found a nice one for him. What about Caleb and Titus and me? The leftover of the fjord that I've got, I can knit a pair of socks for Titus out of that. Caleb is busy knitting his own socks. And I have plenty of colours that would do for you and me. I don't have that many men colours. We have bright me yarn colours. Yeah, I've got lots of yeah, So I've got some that he can, but it, I'm really sh more short of yarn for, for Papa than anybody else. So, um, yes. Thank you very much, Sarah. I am, we were perusing all the different colours yesterday, and I was getting the geek to help choose which one he wanted. He wanted. Yeah, so that's going to be very fun. Right. What else in my over to you section? I have two questions. The one was from Flower Fountain about what stretchy bind off I use on the top of my socks. Oh, I know, I know, I know. Jenny is extremely stretchy something. something. I don't actually. Who? I don't. I thought you did. That, that one. is one of the stretchy bind offs. Is Jenny surprisingly stretchy bind off? And you can. Um, Google that and it will be on YouTube. Or I will go and put one of the link. I'll put a link on in the um, show notes. That is one way to do the, the thing. The other way is to do the uh, knit two together bind off, which is the one that I tend to use on my socks. So I did bring a couple of pairs of socks to show you. Shocks. Shocks. So Shocks. there is my bind off there it does maybe flare slightly this one you know so maybe much. flares a bit. no there's a reason for that and i am lazy so i don't tend to do it there's a, a very nice video which i will link to by very pink who does quite a lot of knitting tutorials um and if you look up very pink that's what the channel is called and then she's got all the videos on there so this is the two together and it is really quite quite stretchy you know you get a good bit of stretch on that i think in the samples that she was testing it gave me three itch, extra inches on the on the sample thing that she was doing it has a slight flare to it not enormous i don't think but it has a little bit of a flare but as i said i've got a, a high arch i need to get my socks over so that's the, the one way sometimes what i do like with this one and it does make it a little tight to get on but it flares slightly less is that i do one knit two together bind off and then one regular bind what off. What is three needle bind off? Oh, that's joining two things together. We're knitting, this piece has a needle in it, this piece has a needle in it, and then you're knitting with a separate needle and you're binding off those two pieces. Oh. So you knit through two stitches and, yeah, different thing. Um, so this one, I do the two together bind off and then one where I just do a normal bind off and cast off normally and then I knit the next stitch and I have two and do them two together. Um, now, very pink shows you how to do it in pattern as well. So if you've got, say, a two by two rib, you know, knit and purl, that you could knit the knits and purl the purls, which I guess, excuse me, ideally is Good. better, but I'm lazy. So I tend, to just, I just tend to knit two together the whole thing all the way around. Um, Mom's lazy. On that one, as I said, you can see it's got a, a slight flare. This one, I did it every alternative stitch. Let me see if there's a big difference. Yeah, that one does get a bit more beginners. A bit more stretchy. And this is one. slightly stretchier, yeah. Mm. It's softer. So yeah, this so one this one's got a bit more same, yeah. this one's got a bit it does have a bit more stretch in it. If you can see there that actually so if you want a really, really stretchy one, do the two together every stitch. If you want um it not to be too flared, then do the knit two together and then the next stitch just do a normal cast off. So that's that's what I do. And as the other way is called the um, Jenny surprisingly stretchy bind off. So those are my, my the ones I use. 
Then Hill Turtle on um, YouTube was asking me about um, learning to do magic loop for socks. Um, and there are quite a few tutorials on um, learning to do magic loop on YouTube. Very Pink again has another tutorial um, on YouTube. And um, on doing two at a time toe up socks and doing, um, you know, just learning to do the magic loop. And you may want to learn to do magic loop before you do Sock. first socks, like maybe do a magic loop with a hat or something where it doesn't, um, you know, you're not knitting on such small needles on such a small circumference and often where you've got to be manipulating stitches for a heel and that sort of thing. But if you're a fairly confident knitter, it's really not difficult. The magic loop is really very easy. Um, you, what? If you don't want to do magic loop, always do. You can get the little, um, uh, nine inch circulars. The only thing with those is you need to put them on something else to do the heel. Or don't or make well, no, 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 they're not for the heel, for the toe because the decreases to the toe. You couldn't magically. You I can remember do I the heel on this, but mm. I but it's difficult. I haven't. I can't remember if I've done the heel on that before. You haven't listed a full page dollars on this before. Mm -mm, can't remember. I know for the cast on I have to do it on something else and then put it on there. Um, so, yeah. I learnt Magic Loop by somebody showing me. Who? Kale. And the um, I've shown my children how to do it by showing them and I've shown quite a lot of people. So if at all possible, if you are near a yarn shop or another knitter or anybody that does um, knitting. Magic Loop, then ask them to show you because it really is a lot easier if somebody shows you how to do it. But that said, Rachel has learned to crochet and to spin by using YouTube. And there are a lot of tutorials on. Don't give up after watching five. Yeah, you know, um, you need to find the one that explains it and that you can see in a way that you understand. So I know that Rachel sometimes has to watch quite a few videos before she finds the one that explains it in a way that she like um so you don't give up after watching just one or two if you didn't understand that person try to find um a, a different video you know if that one didn't if that one didn't help but um you know as i say very pink is often a good place to look for tutorials there are quite a few other video tutorials online i know that heidi bears does um some two at a time videos i think she did a magic loop tutorial as well um Claire Devine of Sock Anatomy has quite a lot of tutorials and in her sock book um, sock explains, it's her sock anatomy is really a really good sock book for beginners. I'm not sure that she teaches you how to do magic loop in that, but there are often sometimes courses on different yarn shops and, and places to do a, a magic loop. No, but what's, what's the thing that you, Craftsy? Oh, Craftsy. There may well be a, a class on Craftsy on learning magic loop and socks. And there are two different ways to do socks. Toe up and then cuff down. You um, if you, you're if, on the argument side of toe up. I prefer toe up, yeah. If you are just very new to magic loop, toe up, because you've only got such a few stitches in the beginning that you're manipulating, um, it might be a little tricky. You may want to do your first socks. Cuff, cuff down. down because you're just literally knitting a tube at that point and then you can do the heel oh, my book was about to fall off um you can do a tube and then but i mean that's personal preference by the time you've knitted an entire pair of socks you'll be magic looping easily the other option is to do them on, on double pointed needles which is you know another way i need, i want to try that i'm just no that i've got to keep track of two needles for my sock blanket which i don't even know where they are now um, <laughs> Which you and I'm constantly losing them. So I know that when I'm knitting on something and the entire, the needles and the cable and everything is attached to the knitting, I have a lot less chance of losing it. So if I had to keep track of five needles 
And I know that you get those fancy little needle cases and then you put them in and close it up. But you know, somebody's going to call me and instead of thinking I'm finished knitting, I'll put this in the fancy case and close it all up and put it away. One of the children will call me and I'll just put down the knitting, get up and then come back and mom then said, it's lost down the side of the couch or it's rolled under the... Oh. Basically, mom, we call mom and mom and dorps and, yeah, and then the Yeah, and, and then goes and sorts the children out. Or, you know, goes and oh, I'll make a cup of tea or something. So I don't learn putting the whole thing or away. Or do the so. washing or unpack the dishes. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, I can imagine, yeah, that I might lose double pointed needles. And also, I was more worried about ladders and things with... Do you get ladders? Well, no, I don't on magic loop, but I was wondering if you knit on four different needles, if I would be then getting um, ladders on the side. I don't know. It, it really is personal preference. I've knitted all my socks on magic loop. I'm quite comfortable doing magic loop, so it's not... Um, a problem for you. Yeah, it's my preferred method and I can't lose my needles on I my... have an idea. What? You can do double pointed needle challenge. Oh. And in the round challenge. Oh. And then everybody who who can't knit who knits in the round can do double pointed needles and everyone who does double pointed needles. Maybe we'll do round. maybe we'll do a knit along later on in the years called Swap, something about swapsies. No, so it's like swapsies means like you, you swap between two people. Something where you have to knit socks a different way, which should have been for our opposites knit along, shouldn't it? Um, but but it'll just be for socks where you have to do. So if you knit toe up, you need to go cuff down. If you normally do magic loop, you have to do DPNs. And if you normally do a gusset and. Um, uh, so if you haven't. So basically, so for me, I would have to knit cuff down with a gusset because I normally do a short row heel. So I'd have to do a gusset and gusset Top heel, down, gusset, gusset heel, heel double, double pointed, pointed needles. needles. So if you're opposite to me and you normally do cuff down with a gusset heel, so then you're going to have to do magic loop with a short row heel and a um, toe up. Toe up. Or any variety of which ones of those you do, and you need to mix it up for your thing. Maybe we'll do that later on in the year. We'll do uh, sock shake up or sock sock something. Mixeroonie. Mixeroonie. <laughs> <laughs> so that would be a word title. Uh, it would be a word title. So hey, good good to actually challenge ourselves, learn to knit a new a new way, or or do the something a bit challenge. differently. Oh, can you imagine? Alright, okay, I'll do it. If I knit on double pointed though, those that did on double pointed have to do magic loop. And I will go cuff down. I can do cuff down and I can do a gusset. So on a on a double pointed needles, that sounds a bit scary. I'll do it. Okay. There is you there is YouTube. You're quite right, there's YouTube. So my over two section this time was one that I want to move to Germany because I can't believe how much um, sport weight... We've gone weight, completely off track. Yeah, I can't believe how much sport weight and DK weight sock yarn they've got. And then answering two questions. So the over to you section is really anything that you want to ask me that I will answer in that section. Don't or, ask me on Ravelry, don't. Yeah, Rachel's not very good at answering I haven't Ravelry. been on Ravelry forever. She's not on there for... Um, Rachel's the Instagram girl, you know. I do Instagram, I don't do Ravelry yeah. very much. If you want to ask something on Ravelry, ask mommy. Ask mommy, yes. Um, yes, the over to you section also, you can show us or share with us anything that you're doing or anything interesting or something where you're from or something that you've discovered or a new yarn to you or um, anything. Something interesting. Something interesting from where you are, or a question, or anything. Anything that's different from something that we would just do. So, yeah. over to you can include any number of... What about snow? Well, they're going into summer, so I don't no, think they're including like, any snow at the moment. Where has winter that has snow? Now? Yeah. No. Oh. Maybe some places in the Southern Hemisphere, like I think up in the mountains in New Zealand, there is some snow. And some places in South America, up on the top of the mountains and stuff. But... I Most think, places like I don't yeah. think you get internet there, so I don't think you can watch. <laughs> no, there might be some internet. Anyway, um, very slow internet. Yeah. So feel free to send us anything about where you are. So you'd if like you're having to. Christmas and you get snow, and you're in the northern hemisphere or southern hemisphere, if you get snow, that would be interesting. Oh, you want to see snow, do you? Um, um, uh, Disa, Disa's craft um podcast. 
had a little clip of uh, her and Mira, her dog, in the snow. There was snow the other day. I was seeing snow on some of the on some of the Instagram pictures in March. Was it March? April. April. There was snow. I was thinking it was quite late for. Very late. And then my sister was showing me that it was got quite warm in London the other day because the kids were out in the garden and, and, we, and having ice cream and stuff. So. We skyped with them on Rory's birthday. And were they? In, was it warmish? Okay. Cool. And they, on his, on his party, it apparently was raining. And then just before the party started, the sun came out. Oh, that's always nice. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. We have blabbered on for about no, it's not so 50 long. minutes of your time. <laughs> we really enjoyed when you come and spend time with us. And um, hopefully we'll have some more knitting and things to share with you next time. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Yes. And um, until we see you again. Do scenes. Bye.